Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 79. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hi, Norman. Hey, Daniel. How are you? I'm okay. Well, first week of the new semester has just started, so it's back to work. Oh, um, sounds like fun. And talking about fun, I saw you flew a plane... Oh yeah, I drove a plane yesterday night with Elsman. Came over to stay with me. Yep, thanks for coming up, Dashine. Oh, awesome. So, it was hectic from what I saw? Uh, well, yeah, considering that I'm a terrible, pli- terrible pilot and a terrible driver in real life, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you're doing something good right now. Yeah, that's true, you know. Don't want to risk any more lives. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. If I'm not mistaken, you're getting the Seeds of Kindness album number three? Oh, yes, yes, that right now, yep. Cool, everybody should get it. Because from what I hear, it's a good album. Oh, so you heard it already? More or less, give or take. Anyway, okay. moving on to the next person is Charlie. Hello, good evening, Norman. Good evening, Charlie. Oh my god, you sound so much good. So better right now. So much good! <laughs> yes, you're so much good. Yeah, that's right. Because after you encouraged me to switch from iPhone to MacBook, I guess my quality has increased. Yay. For a second, I was going to think you said, like, switch from iPhone to what now? Switch from iPhone to MacBook. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't have a mic, so I just rely on the inbuilt hardware. Which is pretty good, which is pretty good. Anyway, our guest for this week is Rommel from Rooney's for Good. Hello! Hey there, Rommel, how are you doing? I am doing good, how about yourself? Fine, thank you, fine. Uh, we're, we're doing okay, it's past, well, past 10 p.m., but time zones, who cares? When everybody's hearing this, it'll be morning, day and night. It'll be where, uh, whenever they want to hear it. True indeed, true indeed. I can hear it in the morning. Yeah, true that. But anyway, Rommel, how are you, how are you? I'm good. Just woke up about 30 minutes ago. Uh, oh, good morning. <laughs> yeah, Wait, it's about it morning? Eight. It, it yeah, is. it's 8.22 in the morning okay, over here in California. <laughs> yeah, okay. So. For the guys at home who might not know this, um, Rommel lives in the west coast of the States, so it's basically about 8 or 9 a.m. It's, it's 8.22 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, yeah. It, no, no, don't check your watch. You're listening to this as a podcast. It's not live. No, true. But the thing is, he just woke up. I'm telling all listeners not to check their watch because no, be like, it's 8 a.m. It's 8 a.m. I'm late for work. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you for coming on this early, Romo. Um, we appreciate it. No problem. More than happy to. So anyway, before we start, we need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who's your favorite character? Princess Luna. Oh, Luna. It would be stupid for me to ask, but why Luna? Well, I just love Princess Luna. The design of her uh, pony is just what really uh, grab, grabs me. I really love the way that they just did the um, the hair. I love the idea of having like celestial objects basically uh, floating around in that ethereal mane. It was just a really, really cool design element. I loved the colors as well, especially Midnight Blue is one of my favorite colors. So I really gravitate to any sort of object or, in this particular case, pony with that color. I myself consider to be like a night person. I find a lot of spiritual comfort and uh, guidance just through looking at the night sky. And I, I really kind of uh, like that concept going along with uh, the character of Luna being somebody who raises the moon and the stars in the evening. Reasons like that, I kind of began to uh, like her. And then ever since uh, her first major appearance, I should say, in the uh, Luna Eclipse episode? In, in season two, episode oh. four, with the Halloween episode, I just fell in love with her even more. I just kind of like a little bit like a socially awkward, but yet like domineering and very self-assured character who still is like trying to kind of transition into a world that she isn't entirely familiar with so just you know elements like that really uh, caught my attention and uh, allowed me to uh, love her as a character and then just the way she's kind of represented in the, in the fan on is, is good too excellent okay. reasoning because that was the best explanation i've ever heard for someone's favorite pony true true Everyone else is like, because I'm like her, because she's cute, because she's pink, or something like that comes up. <laughs> true, true. Wait, which fan on Luna do you like the most? Not so much gamer Luna, but definitely some that's been um, constructed through a few of my favorite fan fictions, I should say. One in particular being... Oh God, what was that one called? It's the one where Luna does a spell... Basically, does a spell to turn uh, Celestia into a... Uh, 
a Did foal. Oh. And she does plants this like fake takeover of Equestria and think but that in reality it isn't. It's just her trying to basically now um, rule Equestria primarily on her own with uh, Celestia and says taking an involuntary vo- uh, vacation. Basically ones that kind of gravitate to her as being a uh, character that has a, um, a more subtle pattern of coming to the task as a uh, lead in, into a leadership role, basically. Uh, her developing as a leader and her developing as a um, as a uh, responsible and heroic character is ones that I really like of her. And then I also like ones that kind of have her set in the transitionary phase where she's still trying to acclimate into the uh, modern pony era, if you will. Um, <laughs> as opposed to her being like Gabe or Luna or things like that. You know? uh, I, I, I see, I see. That voice. Mm. Yeah. So I, I definitely kind of like that, you know, especially the idea of Abacus. Like, I, I just, I, I love that motif that, that comes with uh, her just using that to perform calculations and figure things out. Okay, cool. Well, Luna is a good character and everybody loves the Lunas. So what is your favorite episode? Oh, goodness. I really did enjoy Luna Eclipse the longest time, but ever since uh, Sleepless and Ponyville came out, I, I just really, really love that episode. Even though it's not primarily a Luna episode, it does feature Luna in a prominent way as kind of like a mentoring figure and one that I, and, and it kind of demonstrates one of her powers that I always figured that she had, which was, you know, purview mm-hmm. over the dreamscape, oh. um, being able to provide guidance and almost insight in that particular uh, realm of reality towards uh, ponies who, or, you know, characters more or less that are misguided or in a kind of um, stressful or adverse state. So I really uh, enjoyed that element being added to her character. And I just, I loved the uh, the way they kind of just did the uh, <laughs> return to the moon. It's like, whoosh, it's kind of cool, cool bit of animation there. So yeah, let's see, that's my favorite episode right now. But I, I definitely still love Luna Eclipse. Yeah. You think she's going to get another episode season four? I think so. I mean, uh, there, there's already been a, I don't want to say total confirmation, but there's been a, a very strong indication that there's going to be some sort of origin episode involving, you know, uh, Luna and Celestia and how um, Luna originally got corrupted. And that was, you know, in the season four spoilers that they showed at the San Diego Comic-Con MLP panel. So once that comes out and uh, kind of creates the set kind of narrative for how Luna got corrupted, all of the uh, fan-on narratives that uh, explored various potential ways in which Luna has been corrupted, get thrown out the window and all the people are just like, oh God, my head cat in is no longer applicable because now they have a set corruption story. True, true. Hasbro do like to mess around with people's head cannon. Oh, Hasbro likes to mess around with bronies, full stop. <laughs> indeed, indeed. They, they just don't know what to do with us, really. Oh, true, true. Hasbro do like mess with the bronies. And what to do with us? I don't know. Uh, provide more swag. Uh, if you give us more swag, we buy more swags. But anyway, the third question is, Rommel, how did you become a fan of the show? Uh, well, I became a fan of the show um, about two and, a, two and a half years ago um, during the uh, interlude between season one and season two. So um, I had just gotten off my semester from university and I was... Um, engaged in a lot of political activism while I was uh, at school and I wasn't able to do said activism back down in Los Angeles where my family was staying so I kind of uh, was trying to find something to fill up the time that was normally taken up when I went out and you know protesting and I um, found My Little Pony through uh, Team Fortress 2 um, you know just uh, at first it was just um, icons of Rainbow Dash or of um, you know uh, Pinkie Pie and stuff and I was like oh what, what where are these icons coming from? And so I started doing a little bit of research, and I read the Know Your Meme article, and I started reading the um, end of creator-driven animation, um, that particular article. And um, the more and more that I explored it, I just was like, wow, this is a really interesting um, cultural ph- subcultural phenomenon. I should probably take a look at the show myself to see what the, uh, the hype was all about. So I decided to watch it, and, well... Two and a half years later, here I am. <laughs> wow, that, that's interesting. From activism to ponies. <laughs> I did not see that one coming. <laughs> well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still an activist. And, of course, the way the way I kind of um, navigate through the fandom is through a uh, particular outlet of altruism. So. Mm, okay. So I, I can see it now. Um, if you were in the pony world, you would be supporting the Lunar Republic. 
Uh, I prefer not to take political affiliations with regards to uh, political <laughs> factions in the question. <laughs> Okie dokie dokie. Okay, so I am supposing you didn't vote in <laughs> any of the bad favorite polls? No, uh, no, 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 I did not. No, that, that's secret, that's secret, you can't tell, that's secret. <laughs> no, I didn't ask him who he voted for, I asked him did he vote or not, that's not a secret. Anyway, let's move on before it gets really awkward. Um, What do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Family is quite supportive of it, they really uh, like the fact of what I've done with it. They're kind of trying to push me away from the more radical political actors that I was doing, and they thought that this is one way that we kind of diffuse it, and I just kind of uh, found a way to be able to incorporate it into the whole schematic of social political activism, I should say, that I like to uh, involve myself in. So just another outlet, if you will. And they're still really supportive of it, and they actually kind of watch the show a little bit themselves. So, you know, they are definitely uh, encouraging me to do this kind of stuff. And um, my friends, for the most part, a lot of them are pretty supportive of it. My girlfriend, um, she doesn't watch it uh, that much, but she's definitely uh, privy to a lot of my uh, experiences with, like, different uh, folks in the fandom and... Uh, she definitely likes to draw, so I'm hoping to take her to her first brony convention in Sacramento so that we could uh, enjoy a little bit of the community without me being entirely swamped with things to do. And um, probably uh, get her to start drawing ponies. Oh, okay, cool. Ooh. So what is in Sacramento? I, I don't really remember. Sac Brony Expo. Oh, yeah, that's coming soon, yeah, Sac Brony Expo. Yep, next weekend. Oh, cool. Oh, so oh. soon. Time flies, man, time flies. The last time I checked, it was like a couple more months down the road. Yeah, interesting oh. enough for Sac Brony, it's... Run in a college campus, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, university campus. Oh yeah, yeah, university, and it's one day only, so pretty good from what I heard. If you're in Sacramento, go, so go. This is smaller. Well, ah, uh, go listen to Bronyville. They talk about it last week. Cause they can yeah, to go. Just yeah. to uh, shamelessly plugging um, Nightmare Night Dallas. <laughs> oh, true, true. Nightmare Night Dallas. That is an awesome one too. Uh, we Malaysians don't go. We can't go. Unless we have a plane. We can't afford to go. Yeah. Distance, man, distance. You know, Dan, you, you, you have a plane, right? <laughs> Why don't you fly there? Oh, I have. I just can't land it because I end up crashing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> anyway, um, Rommel, thanks for answering our four basic questions. And, well, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. Charlie, why don't you take this one? Okay, in housekeeping, we are going to revisit our previous housekeeping. We here at the MBS show love playing games, and we really like to help in the charity event. What could we do? On the 2nd of November, the MBS show crew will be participating in Extra Life 2013, which is a 25-hour gaming marathon to raise money for Children's Miracle Network. So what are we going to expect during this 25 hours of gaming marathon? Well, there will be a live stream hosted by Norman Senzo, and you can join him in a game, or you can just watch him derp around and reach at the game. True, that's true. And you can expect some, you know, uh, swearing, some drinks flying everywhere, some carpal tunnel syndrome, (laughs) and things like that. (laughs) So, the date is November 2nd. Tune in for the live stream. True, true, true. We uh, we would appreciate if you could donate to our team. Together we can help kids and kicks cancer's buttocks. Links will be provided in the show notes. Um... Donation to me, Charlie, and the show is uh, are there are there. So I tried live streaming a few days ago. It didn't turn out well, but hey, now I know what to do and what not to do. Live yep. and learn. True, true, that was, true. That was quite an interesting live stream, though. I was there for a while. Yeah, because had people over. But then, um, yeah. Actually, I'm thinking if I can actually squeeze in a little bit of time, I might just go to class with my laptop and have a uh, cookie clicker running in the background. Because that's still a game, isn't it? Uh, true. <laughs> no, just to get oh over the God. three hours in class Girl, so that I can I... get through the full 25 hours. Oh, God. Why? The reason I can't participate is because I have class. Okay. Wait. So I need to get through those three hours. Okay, Rom- Romo, what do you want to say about cookie clicker? They were just talking about it excessively on Bronyville yesterday. I don't get it. It's just, you know, it's just cookies. And you're just accumulating endless amounts of cookies. What's the point? <laughs> I don't know. I fa- now I found the point. It's going to be my three-hour passport to getting through class <laughs> during 25 hours. I think it drives upon some sort of obsessive compulsion just to see what is next or just to get the next upgrade kind of thing. Like, people just want to keep on clicking to see, okay, what's next? Okay, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy. Uh, I don't really get it, but I'm quite fascinated by the phenomenon. Well, if it ain't no Oreo, I won't be clicking on it. Fail. <laughs> oh, I think we can arrange for that, you know, just change the sprite. 
Oh. But anyway, Romo, I hope you could help us. Well, if not the Bronies for Good, you personally, with this 25-hour gaming marathon, just be there, say hi to the chat, and, well, maybe answer a few questions. Like, what do you do? How do you do your miracle magic? <laughs> well, maybe something like that. But the anyway. secret is in the video games. <laughs> uh, I ain't going to say much. But I hope you could help. I'd be happy to, and uh, I'm not the only one at Brad uh, Bernie's Figure who does uh, the magics, if you will. There's a whole team involved, so. Oh, true, 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 true. No, no pressure here, no pressure here. The pressure's on us, but hey, oh, never mind. Let's move on to the next topic. And the next... The to... There's no pressure in playing games, there's a pressure in winning games, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. Oh, and um, uh, Scoot Scootaloo from Brody Street says hi. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, Scoots. Why do I know him? Why do I know him? Where have I heard him before? Yeah, he's a canon character in the show. <laughs> no, no, Scoot Scootaloo. <laughs> he's from Brownie State. Oh, no wonder. Oh, right. Anyway, moving on to the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Fluttershy is best pony, says the hub. A I while. Like <laughs> what is it? I approve. I like this. <laughs> All righty then. Yeah. Okay, anyway, a while back, the Hub Network did a poll for My Little Pony fan favorite character. After the votes were tallied and counted, the results was announced on September 1st. The winner of My Little Pony fan favorite character was Fluttershy. To celebrate her victory, the Hub Network did a marathon showing of My Little Pony Friendship with Magic featuring Fluttershy. If you were wondering what happened in the marathon... There is a video link in the show notes showing what happened, like bumpers and video, which is really interesting. Anyway, links and pictures can be found in the show notes. Ah, uh, looky there, Fluttershy is best pony. Yay! Yeah, one, one thing interesting of note, um, have you guys noticed the uh, video has got some older adult males featured in there? Oh, sure, uh, even adult females. But yeah, true. Um, it's a lot of show old what? What? No, really, the video... Um, the ones that show little segments of uh, asking people who do you vote for and um, things like that, they featured a few members of the older audience. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm, true, and true. if I remember correctly, yes, I'm sure that somebody was wearing a certain wall- grey Pegasus Warlight muffin eating shirt. True, Pegasus. true, I saw that too. You know, you know who I'm... Ghost Pony! No, true, true. But, Rob... Rain Cloud! <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Have it your way. <laughs> Indeed. But no, uh, Rommel, what do you think? Have you seen it? About the, um, the hub pull? Yeah, the hub pull and the video with the marathon and the bumpers. I haven't seen the exit pull yet. I'm indifferent towards it. Okay. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that Rarity didn't win because Rarity is best main six pony. But, um, <laughs> well, I'll just uh, leave it to the uh, will of the fandom to decide, apparently... Oh, uh, true. Is our best friend, From what I understand, of course it is. Andrea does voice uh, does voice Fluttershy, so I should be happy. But well, it, it's cool. It's cool. We we all want Fashion Pony to win, but nobody is perfect. Now, we all know the results are null and void. You all read the hub a few weeks ago. Angel was accused of buying votes. So yeah, <laughs> no, sorry, no, no. Okay, you, you want to know what really happened? Um, the voting system for this one is it's rigged. No, no, no. It's not rigged. You vote for. You vote for a character, and then you were asked 10 questions. Each correct question gave you additional points. Yeah, I put all of them towards Pinkie Pie, and obviously something went wrong there. Yeah, you <laughs> didn't vote enough. No, but honestly speaking, no matter who won, it was really interesting to see the bumpers. You showing the kids, showing mm-hmm. some of the adults, saying yeah. who they voted for. It was pretty fun. Yeah, it was. I enjoyed that bit. I'm just a bit confused at why some of the shirts blurred out. Um, copyright material from other shows like Adventure Time and whatnot because um, <gasps> if you do see other shows um, like some documentaries or some news shows they usually blur out some shirts because <clears throat> they did not have the right or they were not PG for TV mm-hmm. that mm. makes sense yeah. yes I see the point now uh, if for for the hub they did not want to show stuff from Adventure Time Power Rangers or whatever brand out there it's really understandable. It's really understandable. But anyway, it, it shows the hub in a better light, I hope. But anyway, um, if you're grumpy about that, well, Satisha is the best pony, says the hub. I can't say anything about it. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Yes, indeed. So moving on to the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Rommel from Bronies for Good. He does the charities and he gives the monies to the people who need the monies. Hey there, Rommel. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Fine, thank you. It's just been a derpy recording and a derpy start. 
Indeed. Yep, yep. But anyway, Romo, uh, mind, mind telling us who you are and what you do to the people who might not know who you are? Um, well, as you had already said, I am um, one of the uh, principal organizers with uh, Burning for Good. And um, basically what I do within the organization is I'm uh, responsible for some bit of the PR. I do email correspondence and I help up with organizing a number of our events. So, yeah, I'm just kind of a general, general go-to person for it. Uh-huh. So, well, I don't know if my explanation was correct or not or spot on, but you work with Bronies for Good, an organization, and help aggregate the money to people who need it? Bronies for Good as an organization generally works towards the um, advancement of different types of um, causes of uh, charity, altruism, volunteerism within the uh, Brony fandom. So, you know, we do organize fundraisers. We put together, you know, blood drive events or other such volunteer events for uh, uh, folks to get involved in. And we also in general, trying to support um, charitable efforts in the fandom as best we can and uh, um, providing people with an avenue and a means to be able to do that. Mm, okay, so before we really go into it, you said blood drives. So there's one happening right now or soon, right? Yes, actually, um, currently we just uh, announced it uh, about three days ago. Um, it would be Nurse Red Hearts Roundup, so that is actually... Um, our um, ongoing community-wide blood drive. It started back in um, 2011 as kind of like our first um, bona fide event. And then since then, we've uh, basically uh, we started it um, each year, making it an annual event to um, essentially encourage readies to go out and donate blood and to provide uh, assistance in being able to get blood donated through different um uh, donation centers across uh, the world. And um, if you go on our site, actually, um, you will see a, a comprehensive list of different services that we've got kind of compiled that provide uh, links, direct links, of course, to um, either being able to make blood donation appointments or being able to locate a donation center within your locality, be it, you know, in uh, varying parts of the United States or even in Europe or on um, Australia. Mm, well, I see it here, I see it here. Any like, in Malaysia, by any chance? The Red Cross is a uh, global um, non-profit organization, and they should be uh, having uh, chapters within different parts of the world. So if there is a Malaysian chapter, you can look on either their uh, their website portal to see if they have um, blood donation appointments or um, some sort of blood donation centers available. Otherwise, um, what I would recommend would be going into um, any sort of local hospitals or clinics in your uh, with the respective part of Malaysia that you live in, be in the capital or elsewhere, to see if they're um, allowing for blood donations. Yeah, that's true. I can attest to that, actually. Uh, hospitals have, uh, hold blood donation drives from time to time. And, um, yeah, pretty, pretty good benefits if you go as well. They will give you a car. And uh, apparently, if you... Drink. Clean, you know, yes, they'll give you an isotonic, um, like one of those electrolytes. What isotonic? I got a Milo. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, they will just give you a drink. Uh, okay. And you Wrong can room. accumulate your rewards uh, over time with your card. You might get benefits as well, such as... Um, Where do I go for this? I've been donating blood for the past three years, and this is the first time I'm hearing about rewards. Yeah, there's a card. <laughs> At least the government hospitals gives you a card. I have the card from Sam Darby, but I don't know. <laughs> okay, Edwards, uh, Edwards. okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, guys, Romo might be a bit confused. Uh, oh. Romo, Charlie here, he works in the hospital. He's a doctor, <laughs> so he knows a lot. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I'm the dumb skull. I don't know anything. Because <laughs> uh, what happened the last time I went to the national hospital to donate blood, they said, oh, the blood bank's closed. We're not accepting blood. I'm like, you said what now? <laughs> Apparently, the national blood bank was a little bit low a few weeks ago. But no, it was not Pusat Dara Negara. It was Hospital Kuala Lumpur. No, no. Most of the blood comes on Tabung Dara Negara. It's the same. It's all sourced from like one big center and stuff. So. Yeah, but they didn't want my blood. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say of that. Okay, fine. <laughs> moving on, moving on. <laughs> so, okay, uh, you, you heard it from Romo and Charlie here. If you can, go donate blood. It's good. People might need it because some people like Daniel Derp and get into accidents and they need the blood. Accidents? Most young people require blood transfusions, for example. Yeah, you know, because for me, you only live once, so... <laughs> well, I mean, even in the United States and Canada, there's uh, only a, a small portion of the population that uh, is active blood donors. Um, 
this is Red Cross statistics, of course, from 2006, is about 9.5 million, um, you know, out of a little over 300 million uh, now. So um, it's definitely a uh, uh, important uh, civic responsibility to undertake to go and donate blood. And, you know, having a, a part of the a, 30% of the U.S. population eligible to donate blood, um, you know, withstanding uh, nonsensical policies at the bar, say, you know, um, uh, homosexual men or uh, pansexual or transgender uh, folks would be able to donate blood, which... Um, yeah, those, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's the number. Those uh, risk factors, then they, they, then, then they won't be eligible if they have high, yeah. high risk factors. Let me re-emphasize the point that, yes, donating blood is important. Blood bank needs them. The blood only lasts for like three to four months as per uh, lifespan of the blood. So, yeah, guys, please, if you're able to donate blood, it's good. You get rewarded. People get rewarded. You fulfill civic duty. Everyone wins. True, true, yeah. true, true. Particularly um, O negative or AB positive because those are uh, blood types that can be transfused to patients of all other blood types. Really? Oh, that wrong? I'm I'm pretty sure it's O negative. O negative. Well, an O negative can be transfused to all blood types, including neg- AB positive. Correct. Uh, plasma can be transfused to patients of all blood types. I mean, excuse me, of all other blood types, with the exception of AB positive. Yes, that's right. Okay, okay. so I'm O positive. So I'm so close here so far. Okay, here's here's the, here's the fun fact. Most, like, majority of the population are O positive. Doesn't really matter. I mean, yes, O positive. That means uh, I'm not special? <laughs> no, most of the people are O positive, which are the do- universal uh, donor. Means that I their blood. I'm so special. <laughs> their blood can be donated to others without any possibility of a transfusion reaction. But that is not 100% true because there's always a chance of a transfusion reaction because of the other antibodies. The ABO group- grouping is only one part of uh, possibilities that they might have a reaction. They actually are the minor ones. Uh, AB blood is the universal recipient. So, yes, yes. Uh, AB blood is the universal recipient. Yes. So, anybody, they can receive any sort of uh, blood type, which is great yes. for them. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> true, and, true. And they take up a, a small majority, a small minority of the population based on statistics. So, yeah, that's your fun fact for the day. Yay, that was bloody. <laughs> Ayo. Well, okay, moving on. So, Rommel, how did Bronies for Good start it? Well, Bronies for Good was founded um, actually via Pony Chan, of all places. Uh, Interesting. It, yeah, it kind of got us out there on a collab board. Um, there were folks who were basically talking about trying to figure out a way to give back to the uh, the world through the uh, fandom and through the uh, values of uh, generosity and kindness as spouse of the show. And at a certain point throughout the thread, I kind of... Um, uh, took the initiative along with a few others to say, hey, let's organize a tiny chat and see if we can actually, uh, you know, come to any sort of conclusive um, set of principles and ideas about what we want to do and how we want to uh, get to this. And after a, a couple of hours and a few minutes of tiny chat, we uh, basically came together, formulated the basic principles of the group, and got started organizing Nurse Red Hearts Roundup, which was our very first project. Oh, so Nurse Red Heart Roundup is the blood drive, right? Yep. So you started out small, yet, wow, this is pretty good. Small yet big. It makes a big difference then. Is that how all projects work? Well, some people like to go big. <laughs> like me. Indeed. But no, I true. the wall, like, bah. Whoosh. So anyway, um, you started off with Nurse Red Heart, and then what happened next? What, after, what happened after that? So then after that, we basically started fumbling around trying to figure out what kind of a project that we would be um, uh, going for next, be it a funding project or otherwise. And we uh, initially started with just trying to get people to uh, donate food and then toys as part of um, Operation Winter Wrap-Up and a few other things. And um, eventually we got to this point where uh, uh, one of our um, older members by the name of Ink suggested that we uh, work together with uh, my little remix to uh, put together a charity album. And uh, my initial, although initially hesitant with the idea, we went along when uh, the lack of a better option to go with and uh, um, put together the uh, Smile charity album for um, the Trans Cancer Association and uh, much from there. And uh, since then, we we got con- we uh, basically cultivated this relationship with a fellow by the name of Talofi from your siblings, and uh, with him, along with a few of the other uh, members at the time, um, Jacob Smilyask, uh, uh, 
uh, Master for TH27, we uh, launched the uh, Seeds of Kindness fundraiser um, for your siblings. And um, this, of course, the Seeds of Kindness supplement company did that. And that was a phenomenal success. And then since then, we just continued to expand and grow over the years and to uh, begin working with conventions. Uh, we've done myriads of fundraising events and um, supporting uh, projects of all kinds. And um, yeah. So that's kind of how we got our start and where we are now. And of course, the season kind of three, uh, we're trying to continue that legacy of, um, of online fundraising, but also working with different conventions to be able to um, do fundraising now for a U.S. beneficiary, Room to Read. So that's a, uh, a new direction we've taken. And I don't know if you're familiar with Room to Read, but what um, they've been doing is essentially uh, these um, educational projects and uh, infrastructure uh, works addressing uh, uh, gender equity and literacy and um, education. So all of our funds that we've been raising for them within the last year have been going to uh, provide scholarships for uh, young girls, um, basically in, uh, in, uh, in high school in Vietnam, because uh, they, the main uh, focus, the main uh, focal point of action is in Southeast Asia and uh, uh, Africa. And since we already have uh, Africa covered, we wanted to do something in Southeast Asia. Ah, so room oh, to... you're welcome to head on over here, you know, if you want to start something. <laughs> we'll give you our full support, don't you worry. Hmm. Awesome. So, Thank you. So, okay. room, room to Read, from what I understand, it's a charity event to help people with um, reading disabilities? Uh, how, how well, it? uh, well it's, Room to Read is a charitable organization based out of the United States that um, supports educational infrastructure projects in mm-hmm. Southeast Asia and Africa for primarily addressing gender equity and um, illiteracy in education. So it's basically ensuring that within more traditionally patriarchal societies or in um, different cultures where it is uh, emphasized that the uh, that the male of the family or the uh, the boy of the family goes to school and the young girl doesn't or, you know, um, um, you know doesn't uh, uh, emphasize learning how to read, but instead, you know, learning craft skills or becoming, you know, essentially like a, a domestic a housewife in that sense. It's it's more or less putting emphasis on uh, getting them to go into uh, education and then being able to endow them with uh, skills and knowledge that they can then use to improve their societies in a whole new increase the accessibility of uh, education, particularly um, rural education to uh, young girls who are traditionally deprived of that for varying amounts of reasons. Mm, understandable, understandable. So, guys, Daniel, Charlie, you guys have any questions? This reminds me of something similar. Um, by any chance, does you recall that there was, um, they call it the Derpy Fu Scholarship for Education? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Associated with um, the Bernie Thank You Fund, it's one of their principal funding projects. Yeah, was did that come first and then this, or was it the other way around? With regards to what you mean, uh, the the, kindness, or? the uh, education for uh, the children in Vietnam. No, that came after the Derby Scholarship. This uh, was within the last um, eight months, actually, that we just got this started. Uh, I see. So it's quite, it's, yeah, it's a brand new thing. This. So with all the charities that have been going on, so. If I remember right, um, the U.S. have this kind of um, organization number, like uh, 501c3. Um, what, what's yes. that? So basically, a 501c3 is a um, title assigned to uh, nonprofit organizations that are registered through the IRS and through the uh, through varying la- uh, layers of uh, state authorities, basically to uh, legitimize the provision of certain types of social services or types of non-profiting um, activities and products for uh, different types of uh, communities in various parts of uh, the United States. And uh, they operate on both local, national, and international levels. And what essentially happens with um, organizations that have that title is that they can offer um, tax, de- uh, tax deduction for um, varying types of donors to the organization. Well, they basically have to have a certain uh, structure in place you know, with the board of directors and with... Uh, certain amounts of uh, rep- reporting on financials and on um, uh, activities and uh, project updates essentially maintain that uh, title that is assigned to them, which grants them the ability to offer tax credits or tax deductible contributions. And um, as I said, there are various types of nonprofits in the United States, but the uh, ones that are you know, traditionally filed under the uh, charitable selection usually provide uh, either direct funding or 
the creation of dedicated programming addressing social maladies or uh, social inequity or the provision of different types of direct services for people. But basically, the 501c3s that fall into the, the charitable category are providing funding or the engagement of programming that is addressing different types of social maladies or um, issues of uh, social inequity or other such concerns related to health care, the environment, or what have you. I'm on the wiki page here. I, I got no idea how legit it is, but the wiki page here says the 501 tree covers religion, education, charitable, scientific, uh, literary testing for public safety to forest national or to international amateur sport competition or prevention of cruelty to children or animal organization. So it covers a lot. So anyway, 501c3, what it means is people can d- uh, deduct from their tax. Yeah, basically you can deduct from your um, form, is it 1080 or 990? I think it is uh, your 1080 um, income forms, uh, which uh, essentially detail um, how much income you're receiving and uh, where you're kind of uh, putting those uh, funds and essentially breaks down the amount of uh, money that you can use as either disposable income or money that goes to... um, uh, particular uh, funnels such as paying for bills or paying for mortgage or mm. education or other such uh, debt obligations or it also it also allows you to be able to say like um, you know, these are, these are uh, one of the avenues that I put my excess disposable income you know such as in if I want C3 or what have you and it provides you tax credits that then can either give you um, additional funds back during the, um, the tax break period. Well, no, it wasn't necessarily a tax break, but it's um, you know, a tax refund uh, period in April or puts you eligible for certain tax breaks. I'm not, I'm not entirely familiar with the, uh, in, with the structure myself, but those are um, some of the elements that uh, it does lead to. It does have a place in terms of uh, charitable fundraising, but there are issues with the structure itself, especially in terms of uh, having to maintain the... Um, certain degree of bureaucracy uh, to keep the title and um, the amount of time that you're placing in keeping that title versus the amount of time you're putting into the projects or the service that you're trying to provide and the restrictions on um, political stancing that you can take or on um, the uh, degree and FCC of that service. And that is interesting. We may need to look at some more, but I, I think what you explained is pretty good. It's pretty good. So besides getting exemption and stuff, is your sibling and room to read part of it? Well, your siblings is a uh, German nonprofit, so they can offer tax deductible contributions for folks in Germany or in other parts of Europe, but to which um, have policies allowing for um, the respective citizens or donors to. Uh, claim tax deductibility on contributions to a German nonprofit. In terms of uh, donors in the U.S. or in other parts of the world, it really just depends on the particular policy infrastructure that you have in place um, within your uh, overall political economic structure. Uh-huh. So for, for donors in the U.S., donating to an international charity like your siblings, although at one point could have been a tax deductible contribution, no longer is. Oh. So um, if you're donating to your siblings, it's, it's not tax deductible. Uh, well, well, they still should because it's a good cause. Definitely should, be, and that's why we have donation incentives in place as a way to say, hey, you know, if you if you still donate, you still get stuff, you know. So mm, true, true. Uh, it's not tax it's not tax deductibility, and the number of folks that are going to be preoccupied with tax deductibility, especially with with regards to this venue, is few and far between. So we don't have to um, usually worry so much about that. But you know, always being able to offer that as, as an option is important. True, 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 true. Especially yeah. making larger donations. True, very true. So uh, I see here that you have GalaCon and BronyCon. So uh, how are they involved? Well, um, GalaCon and BronyCon were involved with us um, in varying capacities. BronyCon, we initially were going to have the charity auction go to your siblings, but because of some uh, legal snafu that we encountered when uh, being able to process international uh, contributions, we had to go with a more local nonprofit. So basically, we worked with them to um, acquire an organization by the name of uh, Cure Search for Children's Cancer as a beneficiary for BronyCon. And they provided us with a table and they also provided us with um, some logistical support. And what we did is that we basically organized a charity auction and put together 
um, a framework for uh, charitable programming in BronyCon, at least. And then in Galicon, one of our other members specifically worked with your, uh, uh, with the uh, staff to um, organize a charity auction there and to ensure that all the funds went directly to your siblings. And also, also the table, to which had varying amounts of memorabilia and paraphernalia that was available for um, donors who uh, chose to give to your siblings. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I wish I could be there to see it in action, but ah, like I said, being here sucks. <laughs> it just means you're in a different part of the world, and in that different part of the world, you are affording you are afforded certain amounts of uh, uh, options with regards to uh, activities and services and uh, products. Hmm. Well, that's why, as we said, you know, if you ever have any ideas or any. Um, project that you might want to run in Southeast Asia, we're always here if you want if you need some help with that. Oh, definitely, definitely. If you're planning any expansions in the near future, perhaps um, maybe to somewhere else to do another uh, campaign or something, where would you be looking for as probably a feasible place to start? Well, at this time, we're not actively looking into expanding our operations simply because we've gotten to that point where we have a lot of partisan initiatives going and we need to focus on getting those taken care of, but when we do choose to expand, I personally would like to see us go into Latin, South America or Central America, doing something down there. We're cultivating some relationships with uh, any uh, bronies and respective communities and orgs uh, down there. And, of course, also being able to move into other uh, spheres of uh, development, particularly in either sustainable environmental uh, projects, you know, like uh, agricultural projects, or even uh, moving to support in like social economic. Uh, I mean, when I mean social economic, I mean like social economy based initiatives within uh, varying types of uh, communities in uh, either Southeast Asia or in South America. Things like that would be something I'd be really interested in uh, pushing Bernie's for Good towards or being able to, you know, uh, offshoot from Bernie's for Good. Of course, these are um, particularly a development to the uh, gear. Corporate social responsibility just, thing? Huh? Is it like a corporate social responsibility thing you're aiming at? Well, would it be corporate social responsibility in the formulation that we're familiar with uh, currently, where it's, you know, multinational corporations being able to claim uh, varying degrees of transparency and of um, socially just operative circumstances where they're treating their workers fairly or they're being able to provide uh, benefits and additional uh funding for community projects, like n- nothing like that, but it would be more, I should say, grassroots in the sense that it would be ah, direct okay. supporting initiatives that emerge out of the communities, uh, out, of, out of communities within Southeast Asia or South America or Central America that are um, geared towards um, independent uh, economic productive activity versus, say, economic activity and development that is instituted by both the state and uh, multinational corporations that is usually export orientated and you know prone to uh, exploitation or to um, cases of uh, fraud, Oops. corruption, yeah, what have you. And um, for that, on that note, um, I'm sure that you probably may have noticed. I don't know um, how it is in the states, but. Um, a lot of bronies, I don't know, what are the age group of bronies right now? 18 to 25, I'd say. So, um, most of whom I believe could be probably working. I mean, over here, we start, we, we would, we try to get a job by the time we're out of university, which is about by 22, 23. So, you know, with bronies in the working force right now, do you think that they can be part of the influence or a starting point towards realizing this? I think so. I really think so. Um... You know, granted that there are issues even in the, in the states or in other parts of the world with uh, being able to procure employment uh, once you finish a university because of uh, the way that the uh, labor market is structured and also oh, the yes. uh, issues with uh, <laughs> uh, university and education as a whole. I graduated uh, four months, so I'm really scared of that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, me too. I graduated in four months as well, and I'm oh, pretty cool. nervous about it. So. Uh, it's it's definitely a little uh, scary out there to go out into a um, into such a turbulent uh, labor market and to be employing well basically like to be uh, uh, applying for uh, employment that is um, entry level and requiring excessive amounts of experience or knowledge and skill sets that uh, uh, people who are far more qualified than you are also competing for. So it's just a really uh, uh, disparate uh, environment to be. Yep. Uh, Entering and 
Yeah, mm. it's it's. Uh, well, you've got it's Brutus pretty good on your CV, so that looks mm. really really awesome. Doesn't it? This, this, actually, it's a it's a vicious cycle of um, I can't get a job because I don't have the experience because I don't have a job. Okay, okay. So, how long has Brutus for Good been running? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. My goodness. It's about as old as the fandom. Most of it, most of it. Some of them have been almost three years in. And I say almost. Yes, true indeed. But two and a half years, oh my goodness. Two and a half years, you help a lot of people and that has to be an achievement for you guys. Yeah, we have a certain amount of uh, pride and it's it's interesting to think about. Well, it really is interesting to um, consider just how fortunate you know, those of us who have been a, a part of Bernie's Burger to be able to do this kind of stuff and to have the kind of environment conducive to, you know, do, to performing these kind of fundraising projects for, say, your siblings or for your social children's cancer or for the uh, children's cancer association. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, it's more than anything like an honor and a privilege to be able to, to do that and to have folks that are willing to support that and to be able to continue doing that because we have that basic support and that uh, report of trust that we built with, uh, with, with donors. It's, it's definitely a source of pride and a source of uh, fulfillment for those of us who are involved and we want to be involved with it more in the future, but we're trying to figure out how exactly. No, okay, okay. Well, I guess we, for us here, we have to wait and see what's your next project going to be then. Through these two and a half years of working with the project, did, did you get any form of mainstream media coverage for your work? Yeah, actually, we did. Um, we've been covered on the USA Today, actually. Um, USA Today. And, wow. Yeah, we've uh, also been featured on this. It's, it's really odd because it's just this one particular um, station in Alabama that has uh, provided a lot of coverage for our projects. And we actually went ahead and emailed uh, the uh, director there because he seemed to have covered multiple amounts of our projects in the past if they wanted to interview us but they never got back to us no so let, let me see if, let me see if I can find it real fast I know it's in Alabama well somebody working there must be a real big brony fan <laughs> yeah, oh there are bronies everywhere mm-hmm. there are bronies everywhere so just give me just a moment I'll see if I can okie dokie dokie ah here we go so this was um, WTBY4 out of Dothan Alabama it has uh, covered uh, multiple events that we've run, both uh, on uh, basically on their news show and on their uh, website. I think, like, I'm, uh, I think I'm familiar with that. Isn't that the channel that um, like covers a lot of Brony stuff, like BronyCon and um, things like that as well? Potentially. Uh, that's in Dothan, Alabama. They, they seem pretty cool. Well, I ho- hope they get back to you because yeah, it, it'll be a shame if they didn't get news from the horse's mouth. Hey, oh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Funds. They haven't gotten back to us yet, but we definitely like to chat with them at some, at some point in the future. Mm, true, true. So, um, Charlie, um, what was your question again? Oh, I was asking, uh, did any any coverage from the Hub or uh, Hasbro? No. No. <laughs> um, basically, they did not acknowledge your not existence? yet. Well, um, they look favorably upon us, and we've had some correspondence with uh, Hasbro in Germany, and we've also uh, gotten stuff... Uh, well, we've gotten some support from the hub in the past, but at this moment, we're not currently uh, in contact with them. Uh, we haven't uh, responded with them recently. Uh, so basically, they just say, hi, you're doing a good job. Thank you for promoting My Little Pony products. Hmm. Okay. Sounds kind good. Of, yeah. well, sounds good. I mean, uh, th- what else can you ask more? Like, hey, since you're here, why don't you donate some cash? I mean, that, that is inappropriate. <laughs> Actually, nice, but, you know. that's what Hasbro will do. Be like, oh, you're here, buy up stuff. <laughs> would you care to elaborate a little bit further on that? Um, you said that in the past you had um, been had, had some coverage from the hub and uh, Hasbro, but in, in what way specifically do you mean? We haven't had specific coverage, I should say, from the hub or from Hasbro, but we like received you know uh, messages of support and offers um, for. Uh, uh, products and promotional materials that we could that basically we could use in our uh, events. You know, most recently we had one of the suppliers working for the hub and for Hasbro who provided us with a number of limited edition enter play trading card mats. Uh, uh, right. So basically use, swag. You know, so yeah, those were examples of uh, ways that they have supported us, and that's more indirectly than anything. But it's definitely been a kind of a bit of support that we received, but. Um, 
We've also gotten a lot of the show staff through both the Studio Eight or you know, Studio Eight, Studio B, Studio and B. Our, Studio Eight. Oh wow! <laughs> but it's I, I, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's early in the morning. Studio B and um, the hub to uh, come on our, our various events to help um, drive up uh, promotion and to spur donations. So in that way, they've kind of indirectly supported us. But in terms of uh, directly being in communication with them, that isn't necessarily the case. But that's pretty awesome. With- soon, soon. That's pretty awesome already. Um, mm-hmm. Getting getting show staff to acknowledge our assistance. I mean, that's a plus point. True, true. That is good. That is good. I mean, Larson has even donated more than 500 euros to us. It's pretty awesome. Wow. Why is the donation collection in euros, but if you're based in the States, shouldn't it be in USD? It's a result of our uh, donation platform, betterplace.org, which is a um, German-based online donation platform that uh, you know primarily uses uh, euros to um, to the calculations for uh, currency donations. So as a result, any sort of donations that come in and in any form of currency is uh, recalculated in euros. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Cool, cool, that makes cool, sense because cool. I was wondering like why euros? Isn't the USD the mainstream thing to do now? Why not euros? Euros are much bigger than the United States dollar. That's the problem. We <laughs> want such a weak ass currency. <laughs> true, it's true. Like, uh, you, for all of you listeners who don't know the exchange rate, it's about four ringgit to the euro. That's my lunch. Mm. Uh, that's well. That's better than uh, the Argentine peso to the uh, the U.S. dollar or even to the um, uh, euro because that's where I'm from originally. Oh, oh you're Argentinian. Yeah. Ah, that, that is interesting. Okay, okay. I thought I had it bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, um, talk, talking about uh, uh, people from other places, um, you, you're not the only one involved, right, in Bonus for Good? No, definitely not. Oh, so um, who else is involved? Uh, my name dropping. Yeah, sure. Um, we have uh, Talofi, who is a uh, Your Siblings co-chair and um, general uh, sparkly pony, as I like to sometimes refer to him, or fluffy pony of our, own, of our own kind. He uh, does a lot of the uh, press release stuff. He um, helps us maintain the website, uh, does most of the uh, um, donation platform and uh, uh coding for any sort of um, a web-based infrastructure we use to host events and we also have Inc who um, has primarily worked with us on the uh, the album organizing the album through My Little Remix and through um, uh, independent channels and uh, also helps with uh, figuring uh, you know, do project management and um, suggestions for uh, different groups to work with we have, it's kind of like a research money too um, we also have uh, Sprocket Dockingsworth, who is a con- has contributed to multiple charity albums, but also... No way, Sprocket Dockingsworth is part of Brody's for Good? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, oh my gosh. Well. I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of his. Oh, well, cool. I, I'm sure he'd be glad to hear that. Yeah, he's uh, definitely party, and he's uh, helped out with um, suggestions on project organizing. He did some stuff for BAP for us, and uh, a little bit at BrodyCon, the... the uh, 2012 Bernie Con, I should say, um, and he generally involved with us. Uh, we also have uh, Kevin Mayers, aka Master Tortilla 27, who um, does a bit of the convention circuit for us. Um, has contributed uh, very much of products and uh, uh, particularly scarves and a little like crafts like that to um, donation drives. And uh, has helped out on occasion with uh, PR stuff. Um, we also have Calgos most recently, who's a uh, involved with those uh, conventions um, and working on the uh, more PR stuff and uh, Calcos, a little as bit in of Calcos, DJ Celestia Radio as in DJ Calcos yeah yes. ah. not former uh, Celestia Radio DJ so he's been involved with us um, and then of course there's uh, actually Scoot Scootaloo uh, for Bernie's today is now starting to get a little bit involved with us too on the PR side of things um, we also have um a couple of other folks have been perfectly involved, uh, Patrick Trainer and uh, Ryan and uh, who both done conventions or helped out on basically networking, and uh, I hope I'm not missing anybody. I think that's everyone. Well, there's a lot of people for your organization, and that is awesome. So where will Bronies for Good be next in the convention circuit? That's difficult to determine right now because um, after uh, BronyCon, GalaCon, Madness, and um, the previous circuit that we have, we're taking a bit of a break. So we're kind of um, on a uh, hiatus right now from uh, a few conventions, but we're working on hopefully getting some stuff started with a few conventions that will be popping up again in spring and summer. So uh, don't want to... Well, surprise. 
yeah, so it's a surprise, but that's what we have going on with Trust Convergence. Oh, okay. Well, we're looking forward to it. So, um, if I remember right, Zach Brony and uh, Midnight Night, uh, Midnight, ah, uh, Midnight Sounds. Uh, yeah, Midnight Night Dallas, will you be there? or? I will be at Zach Brony Expo. I will not be, I, will, I shouldn't say I will not be, but I do not know if I will be at Nightmare Night Sounds right now. I, I don't have a lot of uh, extra cash to uh, spare right now, and I have some uh, uh, housing payments to make, so I might not be able to attend. Understandable, understandable. You'll try to be there. You'll try to be there. I will uh, try. I yes. will try. Oh, okay, so last call, guys. Any more yeah. questions? Yeah, so let me just uh, get get this thing uh, straight. Basically, Bronies for Good started on a small collab thing on Pony Chan, and uh, a few like-minded individuals got together, shared some ideas. Eventually, it got built up into, well, m- multiple... Um, projects and it has become like one giant massive charity uh, organization that it is today is that statement accurate? yeah kind of in a way oh great job great job well thanks alright then just uh, one last question from me actually a couple of last questions from me and um, let's move a bit away from Bernie's for Good let's talk about you um, about your OC oh is there a story to that? my OC um let me see. Our, uh, which uh, version of my OC are you looking? The Skype one. Uh, Skype one. Um, well, the idea behind my OC kind of originated from my uh, love of hats. I have uh, quite a number of hats outside of. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, uh, I wouldn't say. And this is before Team Fortress Two, mind you. Okay. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> Yeah, I have a few uh, K and Goes, um, some uh, some fedoras, uh, some of the. Um, I want to say like uh, I have a top hat lying around somewhere, and uh, I have um, this one very well decorated. I I don't remember the name of the hat itself, but it's not a fedora, but it's kind of like in a popular style of the, uh, of hats recently, and that one uh, in particular is a. Uh, a means to be able to identify me within any sort of Bernie convention. So my OC kind of came out of a uh, mix between my love of hats and my uh, uh, asphyxiation with uh, with, uh, with pants because I also <laughs> I, I do enjoy uh, sporting a varying style of pants, particularly around slacks. So uh, just kind of mix those two things together and uh, kind of came up with this like a uh, creamy colored uh, uh, pony. Pegasus and uh, called it Rommel Pants. <laughs> wow, um, this reminds me of a song from Jonathan Colton, Mr. Fancy Pants. Ah, thank you. And, but, yeah, um, the, uh, yeah. the Rommel part of my name also is uh, uh, derived from my old username when I used to play a company of heroes competitively uh, called Rommel's Badass. <laughs> so I just knew it. Cool. Oh, I thought Rommel was your real name. No, my, well, mm, I don't want to say my real name, but. <laughs> No, I thought, like, for a second, like, oh, this guy, Rommel, that's an interesting name. So, um, we can't see your cutie mark. What is it? It's actually the, uh, BFG logo. Oh, uh-huh. okay, the, like, Nurse Hedrid Hearts logo, that one thingy. Yeah. Okay, all right. So... Nice, nice logo, product placement. <laughs> 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 so, anyway, um... When you're born, you're branded, nobody tells you who you are. Indeed, indeed. So, anyway, um, I think that's, um, that's all the questions we have, right? I suppose so. Alrighty then. So anyway, let's move on. Um, thank you, Rommel, for coming on and sharing your story with us. Yeah, no problem. More than happy to. Yeah, it, it was very enlightening. And well, who knew that there's a lot of work going into what you do? <laughs> well, it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Well, it, it all seems so simple. Do a blood drive, get people together, and donate blood, and then let's do something for. Africa and Southeast Asia. My goodness, how the hell did you do it? <laughs> it seems so simple. Globalization. <laughs> uh, globalization has certainly been a, been a, a part of uh, what has endowed us with the necessary information technology to accomplish the many uh, uh, communicated tasks that we have associated with our projects. But, oh, okay, sorry, I got a little bit fancy there. <laughs> uh, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> No, but still, but still, um, what what you guys are doing is really amazing and really awesome. And um, keep it up because, well, if there's more, well, it's, let's just say this: if I have money, 
I'm trying to donate because I am kind of broke right now. <laughs> well, every little bit helps. Indeed, yep. indeed, indeed. So, Go get the album now. <laughs> so anyway, Romo, where can they find you guys? Well, basically find you, find you guys. Well, well um, they can... And anybody can follow Brownies for Good through uh, at Brownies for Good on Twitter. Um, we have our Facebook page, Brownies for Good. We have our website where we post most of our project updates, blog posts, or any sort of uh, re- uh, related information to our respective initiatives or events, such as uh, Seeds of Kindness 3 or Nurse Red Hearts Roundup, um, which is uh, www.browniesforgood.org. And for me personally, I have a Twitter account um, at Rommel Pants, and I do... Uh, also putting the information out about uh, Bernie's for Good and uh, oh, retweet political stuff on occasion and other nonsensical bits. So, you know, you can do that if you want to. Um, aside from that, uh, if you keep an eye on any of the Pony Media outlets, you will be able to find uh, some decent PR information about uh, what we're doing. So just uh, stay tuned to any of that, and uh, you should be able to uh, keep track of our progress because uh, we have... Uh, Connects to basically every single uh, Pony Media outlet in the fandom. Oh. Everything from uh, EQD to Derpy Who's News to The Round Stable to Everfree News, you know, you name it, we we, oh. uh, we got them. Oh, okay, awesome. Basically, you're still learning the fandom then. Yeah. Everybody loves you. <laughs> True, indeed, indeed. Everyone. <laughs> oh, God, no. Reminds me of that Raymond episode. Uh, um, any, anyway, um, you heard it, guys. If you do have the extra cash, go donate to Bronies for Good. They they are cool. They are cool, and they're helping they're helping um, people out. So wait, before I move on, Rommel, is there a button on your website to say donate? There isn't a button on our website that says donate. But the easy thing that you can do is um, you can either go just to Season Kindness Three. If you click on that, um, it'll take you to the. Um, See so a kind of donation page on uh, your siblings, and you can place your donation there. Um, you can also um, hit up the uh, forum of code that we've uh, established on uh, Pony Chan, which is a uh, new initiative that we just uh, got with them going. And you can go there, and we can um, facilitate any sort of uh, question there about donating either to um, uh, your siblings or to um, uh, Room to Read, because uh, we we do have a means to be able to do online donations for Room to Read. So you can do that, but for the most part um, if you do want to uh, donate directly to Season of Kindness, all you have to do is just go to SOK which is S-O-K dot your siblings um, Y-O-U-R-S-I-B-L-I-N-G-S dot org and then you can uh, place your donation there Okay, I'll try and add that into the show notes So anyway guys, that was Rommel from Bronies for Good Anyway, um, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shout-outs. And my first shout-out goes to you, Rommel. Thank you for being on and thank you for sharing your story because it has been a really amazing story. And keep up the good work because what you're doing here is really special. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support and um, I, I really uh, am humbled by uh, that kind of a, that kind of a compliment because I, I really enjoy doing it. I just, I'm just doing what I, what I feel like is uh, something that I should be doing. And um, the fact that people appreciate that and are willing to support that is um, really awesome and wonderful. And um, I really relish in an opportunity to be able to uh, uh, to, be able to be a part of Bernie's Forget and to do what I do and to also work with folks on forwarding the different types of causes and projects that Bernie's Forget does. Okay, awesome. And if you do have any more projects, do let us know and we'll try and promote it. All right. Okay. <laughs> and- Certainly will. Yep, sure, sure, sure. And my second shout-out goes to you guys, uh, Daniel and Charlie. Thanks for being on here and sh- helping me because, oh, God knows, I can't work on my own. Oh, thanks, Norman. You're the best. So sorry for being so derpy and, um, no. So anyway, anyway, Dan, what about you? Shout-outs. Well, first of all, shout-out to Rommel. Thank you so much for being on. It's a great pleasure to meet you. Uh, no problem. Likewise. And of course, another couple of shout-outs to the local bronies. Um, Elsman, thank you for coming up to KL. I know it's going to be your last, one of your last few days in KL for now. So, yeah, thanks for visiting. Thanks for coming over. To Mel Hilton, thank you very much for coming out for the meetup yesterday. To Zane, to Adam Shane, to all my friends, thank you very much for making this weekend awesome and um, robbing me of my assignment time. But... <laughs> Oh. Anyway, yeah, friends, friendship is magic. Yeah, friendship is magic. True, 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 true. Charlie? 
Yep. Um, I guess my first shout out would have to go to Rommel Pants as well. Well, thank you for the very enlightening experience, uh, and well, we really learned a lot about um, Bernie's for good and well, kindness, charity, all that stuff. Well, thank you. I think I guess I should be humbled for uh, receiving three uh, shout outs, huh? Yeah. yeah no and I guess my Did second part. <laughs> my second shout out would have to be the National Blood Bank for well, giving us enough blood. Thank you very much, National Blood Centre. Yay. Oh, I donated to them last round, so yeah, you're welcome. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a... I'm going to make a bad pun here. It's a bloody job, but someone has to bloody do it. <laughs> okay, all of you. <laughs> it, 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 it kind of drains you, you know? <laughs> True indeed. So, Rama, what about you? Who, who, do, who would you like to give a shout-out to? Um, I'd like to shout out all of the awesome, amazing team members of Burns for Good. I love all of you. You're fantastic. Um, we need to go out for tacos sometime. Aside from that, I just um, want to give a shout out to basically everybody in the fandom who has donated to us, which has been an, equal, an essential part in making our projects um, as successful as they have been. So thank you for donating. Thank you for uh, participating and um, making what we do possible. No, no problem. We we are we are there to help, and well, if we could help in any way, we, we would help. We'll we'll try to help. You should have like a global Brody's for Good social sometime. Everybody meet up in your house or something like that. <laughs> oh my goodness, that would be insane! <laughs> if I had a house, <laughs> <laughs> you can rent up a pool party, do a pool party or something. I'd be like Brody's for Good pool party. Yay! Okay. Yeah. Anyway, if you have any questions. Um, concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at mbshow at gmail.com and if you would like to email us personally you can reach me at norman at mbshow.com and daniel at the mbshow.com and charlie at mbshow.com and you could also reach us on twitter the show's twitter account is at the mbshow follow it for news on the editing of the show and stuff and follow me at norman sanzo i well basically i tweet about food toys and whatever fancies whatever tickles my fancy and daniel what about you well if you like perky pessimism or you just want to know that no matter how bad your day is someone in kl is having a worse day than you'll ever have yeah follow me at saint pinky stpi at kie awesome awesome and what about you charlie oh, I, like, I like how you're saying awesome to how i comment on my twitter <laughs> Oh, it's you, you always do that, so it's awesome that you can, uh, well, basically it's like a script, it's awesome. <laughs> okay. I, uh, you, oh, whatever. <laughs> oh, basically you can reach the doctor at drcxy. Yeah, sure. And Rommel, you, 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 like <laughs> you have a Twitter, right? Yeah, I do, um, it's at RommelPants. At RommelPants, all one word? Okay. You kind of spaces into the handle, so... Oh, you could underscore it. No comment. <laughs> you know, they do it like in the old days. Like, you you know, people... I don't like underscores. <laughs> it's like, as far as I'm concerned, they're blank underlines. It's a space bar with underline. See? Uh, it works. <laughs> uh, uh, mm. <laughs> anyway, also, please... I'm sorry! <laughs> anyway, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. I have been Charlie. And I guess I've been Rommel Pants. And we'll see you in the next episode, hopefully with more money and donations to give out to. Yay! The wallets, yay! Yay! I know where my money's going next. I rob a store and only make it out with 20 bits Look what the buck can I buy with money like this And I ain't psychic I don't know that the store owner hiked miles away to his home So I head out to the night to try to get away I need to plan ahead, thought I found a better day Had a dinner shed and make a set date Not wreck fate, elect to checkmate Cause I'm a petty thief, don't even own a knife Living outside, cutthroat with strife What's wrong from right? That's past me, surpass the fast You grow to back lasting Lackluster, sad to pack mustard So old it's looking like chap black custard Sad but that with the force I can muster And that's that captive in a jester I'm a 
too bad criminal Who's loose pitiful, cynical My lifestyle's too minimal Kill you just to steal food for real dude It's a cold world, catch me in a chill mood nah. Dirt poor, rough pony, you know me Only your bed in my pocket, who's lonely? It's like, hold me, someone I need fans, please A bit of a dollar of three cents So, now it's time for another high Tip hooping right, silent the side of shot Brothers like, yo, you don't wanna do that What if you're caught? Cool? Well, then I'm gonna shoot back Hey now, put the bits in a saddle bag and bail out. Sneak round with the family's at. Hold lums, yeah, rock drugs and robbery. 45 elements of bone fogs in harmony. Succeeds, oh, leaving pockets rain, lame brain, mosquito. Bits obtained, walls remained incognito. Steal from the rich to sustain my ego. All I need is my bobby pin and my screwdriver. So many crimes sympathize in the news writer. Hey, sneaking is hell on my knees. At night, seeking the smell of pastries. It's tasty, and that's why I do this. Answers are set before I leave raw, God, stupid. Sight of a lock door makes me fucking lose it. Taking up zero self close just to get a few bits. This guy's is an intricate bruise Getting caught means a definite bruise Speaking of this incident too Pow! Now for the imminent snooze um, Give me a second guys Romo, were you clicking on the mouse? I don't understand Was, that, was I clicking on the mouse? Yeah. I, I stopped already were you, are, you, are you using a MacBook? No, I'm using a uh, laptop in HP hmm. Okay, so Okay, that could explain it Because there were a lot of katak 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 Oh, that was my keyboard, but hold on, let me oh. adjust your mouse, because I'm actually on my on my bed right now, so... Oh, no, no. Oh! It's just that I've, I've, I've worked with... I, I already like how this is going, it's like, you're, you're, you're podcasting, like, you're, you're on a show, and then, like, on the bed, like, wow, this is awesome. No, it's just that I heard a lot of... Okay, a lot of, you sound uh, very professional, yeah. Norman. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> no, it's just that I heard a lot of this... This is the MBS show, Loose Cannon Edition. Oh, we've always been Loose Cannons. We're the rebel. We, we haven't picked a side yet. You're the rebel? <laughs> Come on, we haven't picked a side yet. You're not the grumpy one. I'm the grumpy one. I'm the rebel. No, we haven't picked a side yet. If, if it's on the left no, or no, on the no, right. No, impartial people aren't rebels. Oh, come on. Independence. Independence. It's independent. Yeah, we're the independent party. Rebel is when you don't pick a side because you hate all sides. <laughs> Uh, so you're a cynicist. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I no, I'm, I'm just unorthodox. Uh, okay. Okay. I, I I hope I can use that for outtakes. <laughs> but anyway, continuing yeah, on. Like putting me in the outtakes right now. <laughs> okay, continuing on. Three.